the reality is th there have been a, an unspoken scenario that the world have been shying from. That masculinity and being a man, especially for a black man coming, you know, being raised in a country that have oppressed our people, right? That we've been under attack for a long time, men in general, but especially the black man. Now, I'm not the one who would cry victim, right? Because why? I can't do nothing about what happened to our forefathers uh, and, and the system that was set up, knowing that God said that he would put us under the hands of our enemies if we broke his law, right? So I'm not in this to say, woe is me, woe is me, I'm an oppressed black man, white supremacy and the unseen hand have been attacking me. No, what we do is we use the power of the most high to defeat the, to defeat the hurdles. Okay. Not, not using our scenario as an excuse of why we're not succeeding. Right. But it's, but, but there's no doubt out there that men are under attack. And have been under attack for a very, very long time. But I want to talk about the occults, the satanic occult attack on men. Because this thing didn't just start with us in America. And this thing isn't just black men. I need y'all to understand this. The first rule of thumb when you're looking to destroy a society through warfare is to take out the greatest resistance. The strong, that's common sense. So they don't care if you're black, white, or whatever the case is. If you are a strong man, you are a threat because you were born to resist. Okay. You were born to understand what war is. Okay. So I want to talk about that this evening. I want to talk about this so that we can level set this so that brothers and sisters out there will, will understand and, and, and appreciate the power that is man. Not here about white supremacy and all this other crap. All right. We're not dealing with none of that. All right. Because that's, you know, that's chasing your tail. There's an, mm -hmm. there's, there's an occult agenda that's going on. Now, let me put this up there real quick. Let me put it up there real quick. This right here is what you see in the middle here between a uh, lawyer and I is the Baphomet. And it's clear that the Baphomet has man and woman genitalia, as well as man and men, man and woman body parts. Right? The man, the man and woman, the spirit of Hermaphrodite, is the god of this world. That's first and foremost. So really, the god of this world isn't for benefiting man or woman. Okay. It's, it's called the changing of kind. If you're not down with the spirit of Baphomet, you are against the God of this world. Okay. And so what they're doing is, Hey, under this spirit of Baphomet and worship, they must exalt the power of which W I T C H to level off the strength that naturally comes with man. It's called W I T C H where old women of ancient times, not the women who had the natural beauty, but the others I'm talking about the pagans. They would use the less comely women to use craft and potions to level off the level, of the playing field so that they can have strength no, because they don't have the outward beauty to get the outcomes they wanted. So Satan would actually initiate and go to the less. That's right. That's where the whole ideology of which came from. You have to target the, the, the people who don't get the privilege strictly off of, off of their outward appearance. That's usually the key for women in life. But they would find the women who wasn't getting the attraction and say, I can level this with you. 
I can get you the poisons. I can give you the craft and the education so that at least you're smarter and can outsmart them. And if they get in your way, when there's a man you want, I can give you a portion, a potion where you can poison the women who threatens your, the path to your man. That's where the whole ideology of which come in. But what they were doing, they didn't realize what they were doing by doing so. If you empower and start a divisive scenario between man and woman, eventually the woman loses because she loses her protector. She loses who was born to protect her. And that's the spirit of Baphomet to play one off against the other, making sure there's no protection at the helm to destroy them all. It's an occult practice. It's an occult. It's an ancient occult practice. A matter of fact, a lot of you don't know this, the Baphomet in the middle you see here, that's right. You can find this in Mason temples, Masonic temples and all that. But well before this, okay, in the Middle Ages, this was the image that was being worshipped and revered from the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar were are, is a segment of the Roman Catholic Church's army. And they were known as starch Baphomet worshippers. Okay. Now, why am I going here first to show you it's an occult ideology? When it, when you hear about what's going on in the media and celebrating certain things and, and all that, when it comes to men, that's an occult ideology. And according to God's Bible, the most High's Bible, we're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to get to the bottom of it today because it didn't just start with us, a lawyer in slavery. It started way back when we fell as a people in the Roman Catholic Church, the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church being Satanist, that's right, at the core, did the same thing when it came to Christ. They could have shown Christ as a man who defeated death, a strong black man who's sitting on the throne of the Almighty. And all of his glory and power, controlling angels and all that. They could have, they could have depicted Christ like that. But how did they look to the, the, that's right. They wanted us to remember Christ dead and weak. With blood on him, a total victim, totally destroyed by the Roman Empire, emasculating him when Christ, that's right, he rose and appeared before the disciples. Now, folks, this is no hocus pocus. I have the books in my room right now, the Roman annals documenting the fact that it's, it was known amongst the, the Roman Empire, a totally different, outside of Hebrew records, a totally different source under the Roman annals even the white Romans knew that Christ rose from the dead. It was being reported all around Rome because after Christ's death, there was three nights of straight darkness in Rome that's chronicled and documented in Europe till this day. Huh? I have the records. So this is secular. It have nothing to do with the Bible. Who wrote the Bible? If the Bible didn't exist, the Roman history states that they knew a man who, who they, who they seen as a possible threat to overthrow the Roman empire because more people was coming to his ideology and his belief of him being king and was born to destroy the Roman empire. And yes, it didn't start with us here in America. It started how they would depict Christ as weak and defeated. That was an occult attack on man that we're going to talk about today. And guess what? Also, with them actually portraying Joseph, Christ's father, as a third will. 
as if Christ was born under baby mama status. An immaculate conception, no man involved. That was an occult attack, folks, on men. We're to be more celebrating the woman who had him. Opposed to the bloodline of men, Christ came through. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited.